Hi, my name is Bill Jacobs. I'm a director in the product marketing group at Microsoft. I'm reasonably new to Microsoft, having joined with the acquisition of a company called Revolution Analytics. At Revolution, we were specialists in the R analytics language, uh, commonly used, I'll show you some charts in a bit, uh, about the R language and how quickly it's growing in the marketplace. But the fundamental thing that we're trying to do now that we're part of Microsoft is endow Microsoft platforms like SQL Server with the capability to enable SQL Server users to embrace prediction and make it a part of applications across the entirety of an organization, a company, or an agency. That's a big challenge. And one of the problems in addressing that challenge is the fact that historically, data scientists have worked reasonably independently from the rest of the organization. Now, when I go out and meet with users, I oftentimes ask people, say, in the information technology arena, do you know who your data scientists are? And the answer I get is typically about 20% know who they are, and the other 80% know they exist, but not sure what they do or where they live. That's changing. In order to make prediction part of the organization broadly, we must make it a, a, a team sport, because by making it a team sport, we can expand the benefit of a capable data scientist across many organizations and teams. We can embrace the skills of other users in the organization, other workers in the organization, such as data engineers, to offload work from the data science team. And we can more closely integrate the work of the data scientist into business applications via BI tools or via hardcore applications written to run the corporate website. And so we are moving very quickly from this independent world of data science to a world of a team sport. And I have to be, uh, give credit where credit is due. I stole that phraseology from a past colleague uh, who had done a lot of this work. As we look at doing this, there are several other issues that must be kept in mind. First of all, why do we choose R to be the basis of doing in database analytics? Well, the, the numbers in the industry continue to grow for the usage of R. We had measured uh, a couple of years ago, or estimated as best we could, the number of users in the world to be around two and a half million. The rate of growth has continued at a brisk pace, so the numbers are probably well above that. But this recent survey was done by the Institute for Electrical and Electronics Engineers. They run a survey every year measuring what computer programming languages are in popular use. Interestingly, if you look at this chart, while in the ninth position last year, which surprised us, it has moved from the ninth position to the sixth position in the list. And if you look, the five languages above R in the June 2015 or July 2015 survey are all general purpose languages. R is the highest ranking special function language in the world. What that means is we can help people acquire and build a talent base by embracing this new class of users that are being trained by universities today in very, very large numbers. Now, as to using R within a database, there is a huge benefit to be achieved by SQL Server users. This is an actual customer example. These are results measured by a client who were attempting to score or provide predictions on the behavior of a very, very large number of households in the use of their product. It was in the hundreds of millions, as I recall. And they were experiencing significant performance problems to do that because they were pulling the data needed to produce the predictions, to produce the scores for each household into a server, running the analytics against the data, and then returning the resulting scores back to the database. As you can see from this chart, one of those particular models was taking about six hours to run across their entire customer portfolio. That was painful because they wanted to rescore the customers every morning. And it wasn't just one score they wanted to produce, they wanted to produce about 30. When they moved the analytics from running on a separate server, in other words, bringing the data to the analytics, to the in-database model, where we move the analytics into the database, so the data does not have to move, all of a sudden, their 300-minute execution went down to a fraction of a minute. We've seen many, many cases of this. So this is another key element of making predictions ubiquitous and easily done within the organization. And finally, one of the other key challenges that we wanted to address as we built SQL Server's in-database R capabilities was we wanted to assure that the CIO never has to have that, that bad day. And one of the ways to have a bad day as a CIO is to have to walk down the hall to your data science team who've been working for years on improving uh, their ability to predict the business or predict the customers or predict the patients and say, guess what? We're changing platforms. 
you need to rebuild your work. So we have always embraced in the R-based products the, the notion of portability between various platforms. We call it right once deploy anywhere. The ability to build a model in one platform and carry it forward into the future, or to build a model in one environment and to port the model and run it in another platform. That extends to SQL Server. Our users with SQL Server will be able to run R to explore data, to profile data, to produce predictive analytics, and also to operationalize those predictive analytics directly by running them inside the database as part of SQL or as part of stored procedures. But when the future comes, and the future always does show up on our doorstep, new ways to do things, new places to run analytics may exist, and the ability to move the work around, either the modeling work or the scoring work, is incredibly important. So we retain that portability for SQL Server. So now let's do a quick demo. So in our example, we're going to utilize data captured in the city of New York, upwards of a billion rows of taxi and Uber data over a course of four or five years to build a predictive model to predict from time of day and location and choice of airport, how long a user should expect uh, to require to get to the airport, how much they should expect to pay. And I'll show you that here briefly. So there are only two choices the user needs to make. First, they need to make a choice of origin, in our particular example, we'll choose the Empire State Building. And perhaps we're flying back to Asia, so we're going to pick up a flight at the Kennedy Airport, which is quite a ways away from downtown, and then have the system predict how long it will take to get to that flight. And as you can see, on the basis of those simple choices, the system has predicted that we'll have about a $70 fare and about an 80-minute cab ride, and some suggestion of what past users have uh, provided the driver as a tip. But more importantly, let's look what's going on behind the scenes. What's really happening here is we're running a predictive model that we've already built using SQL Server in response to the clicks and the choices a user has made. This is actually a graphical rendering of what that model predicts based upon time of day and destination. And as you can see here, it is using uh, a predictive model to tell us where the 10%, 25%, 75%, and 90% points are, as well as the median taxi time. And it does this for all three of the variables we're predicting, the fare, the time, and the tip. From this information, we can then build an application. This particular application can be run on a phone, on a tablet, or on a laptop, all exposed from a simple web application with SQL Server as the back end. Well, thank you for your time and your attention. I hope the demo was uh, at least lightly entertaining. It's a very, very quick, easy demo. It gives you an idea of what you might be able to do with predicting something that's important to you or your business using SQL Server. On the screen is a link to where you can go on our website and get some more information about the end database analytic capabilities that we're including with SQL Server 2016. But I would ask you to think more broadly as well. When you think back to that team chart that I showed where data science is being teamed up with data engineers and IT professionals and application developers, contemplate where you fit in that. Go find the other participants on that chart. They are oftentimes not visible because they may report to the line of business way outside of IT. And yet, it is by teaming with them that those very interesting and innovative new data science applications come to be. So hunt them down. Be fearless about what their titles are because most of them won't call themselves data scientists. We use that name here in the industry to describe a whole category of people that use mathematics and statistics to do their jobs. So look for people if you're in the insurance business that are actuaries. If you are uh, working with a, a products company and you have a marketing organization, there are marketing statisticians, marketing program managers. If you are in the healthcare and life sciences field, Look for biostatisticians. You'll find them. They're there. Team with them. Look at the ideas. Ask them about the uh, business problems they're trying to solve. That's the most interesting stuff. And the, the really fun and innovative work that's going on in data science is what happens when IT, data science, data engineering, application development team together on some of these really interesting problems. Thank you. Thank you.